what we're talking about now is about the biomechanics of the body. Okay? That means we have to be able to observe our clients' movements in a way that will give us some information about either their physical limitations or their physical abilities. We want to be able to do that. So observation is very critical. Second to observation, and this has to do again with movement, we're looking at biomechanical principles of movement. We then have to figure out, based on what we've observed and what we've learned to be able to assess of our observations, we then have to set up a treatment plan to act, um, to help support that person so that they can move more freely and they can be independent in their movements and safe in their movements. So the concept that we have to talk about today is a concept that has to do with your body's ability to maintain itself in a balanced state. Now, I don't mean equilibrium like you've learned in anatomy and physiology, the equilibrium of your internal organ systems working so that everything's in sync. What I, what I mean by balance in this case is that your system that affects you um, musculoskeletally works so that you maintain what is considered balance, and balance simply is not falling. Okay, really, it's really what it is. So the, the idea of being in a state of balance physically from a musculoskeletal point of view means you're not falling. Now, why would we even worry about people falling? Why would people just randomly be falling? But, Instability of the muscle. Okay, so if they have those things, but why why would that cause them to fall, though? So maybe they don't have muscle tone, they don't have strength. So lack of strength, lack of tone, lack of skeletal structure, good structure, could cause people to fall. But why do they fall? Because gravity is pulling you down. That's the answer. Gravity is pulling you down. So please understand that the whole idea of your body movements or protecting your body from falling or keeping your body from falling and still be engaged in movement is because gravity is always pulling you down. It does not go away. If you were in a gravity eliminated situation and you had low muscle tone or poor muscle mass or had lack of strength, you probably still would move, wouldn't you? In fact, what would your muscle grade be for all of your movements if you were in a gravity eliminated environment you were still able to move. and you could fully move through full range of motion, what is the best you know about their muscle strength? It's a two. You don't know if they're anything else because what you would observe is in a gravity eliminated situation. Ah, okay, but we don't live that way. We live in gravity. So it's important to look ahead as we talk about this topic in your lab experience today is to look at the effect that gravity has on your movements and how you keep yourself stable. Okay? Now I'll come. <laughs> so here are the concepts that you have to learn. There are, there are basically three major concepts, and then we'll put them into a series of events that you'll do in lab. One is you have to look at your center of gravity. And that means you have to be able to look at the human body, the position that person's in, and imagine where their center of gravity exists. So I'm going to come over here because we're going to give you two different examples of both Chris and I and how our center of gravity are very different. Center of gravity by definition is the point by which you can come vertically through the body to the center area or space that that demonstrates that everything around it is equally around it so that you're stable, okay? Using that as an example, I would tell you that my center of gravity point, and it's kind of like a point in space, is somewhere about here, back towards my heels, maybe just a little bit in front of them, because that's where you would come through my body and see my best point of balance. Does that make sense? But then where's Chris's center of gravity? It is clearly no longer on his feet. Can we agree with that? Mm -hmm. Okay, so where is it taking his whole body and the chair that he's sitting in, because that's part of him right now, that's part of him right now, you have to understand that, okay? So you take a piece of furniture with you, it becomes part of you if you're on it, all right? This surface of him that is on the surface of the floor, where is his center of gravity, would you guess? So 
you think somewhere in the middle of the chair, right here in the middle of the chair, I'm going to tell you you're a little off. Because what have you not taken into consideration? His leg, his feet, you haven't taken any of that into consideration. So where does the center of gravity have to go? It has to come more towards about here. Now that's going to be very important because some of the lab exercises that you're doing is putting you in a wheelchair. And now the wheelchair becomes part of you, right? And where you sit and how you sit and how the legs are positioned versus the back versus the big wheels or small wheels are all pertinent to you being in a state of stability. Because stability means that you have a center of gravity point and you have been able to establish a base of support so that your center of gravity is in the base of support. Now, I have a base of support. And I'll tell you right now, that's my two feet. That's my base of support. I don't have any other support. I'm not holding on to anything else. I'm not using a walker, which would change my base of support, correct? I'm just here on my base of support. Now, looking at Chris and looking at me, which one of us has a greater base of support? Okay, absolutely. Why, though? Because I've got my feet in the chair. So you've got your feet forward, you've got a chair with four legs on it. He's got a lot more base of support, doesn't he? So in truth, if Chris went to lean forward, how far forward could he lean and still not fall? Because that's what, that's what this is all about, prevent falling. How far forward do you think he can lean versus I can lean? Okay, so let, well, let's try it. So let's see how you do that. I mean, do something that would challenge you. You can use your, your, your drink. And then if I get it, I get to drink it. Okay, now put it there for me, because that was the same distance, right? And I have to be able to get it, right? <laughs> well, for me to get it, I'm afraid if I stay up tall, I'm going to fall. Okay, I'm not, I don't like that. But I don't want to fall, so I'm going to do something else so I don't fall. I'm going to go like this and see if I can do that. Now, what did I do? Well, have I given myself any more base? Remember, he has his feet far away, a big old chair. I changed what? Say that again? I changed my center of gravity. So what did I do to my center of gravity? I lowered it closer to my base of support. That made it a little less scary and definitely more challenging. Thank you. I like this. <laughs> I had to do that. If I went to just reach what was going to happen. Okay, so what was happening in that case? Now let's step back and analyze that. Using center of gravity and basis support as your words to put into the sentence. If you put your center of gravity what happened? over the base of support, you will lean over. You're no longer on your base. Oh, okay. So if my center of gravity leaves my, if my, base, my center of gravity leaves my basis support, I will fall. Absolutely. Very good. But if I lower my center of gravity, maintain in my base of support, I now have better opportunity to move, because that's all I'm doing. Reaching is a form of movement. It's using my body in a way to move, to get to things that I could not do from here, could I? What do you think the most stable position a person could assume? Stable meaning, there's just no way you're going to knock them over. So you think like that would be called quadruped? So that would look like this? No, not like that. If, you're, if you were standing. Oh, you, you were no, I'm talking about any position. Oh, any position. Any position that would be most stable. I'm more stable? Okay, come on. How many of you have raised, spent time with a two-year-old in the midst of a tantrum? <laughs> what do they do? to drag them, right, because they want nothing more. They're smart little beings. They've taken this course. They throw themselves on the ground, lay in supine, and then what are you supposed to do? You don't want to kick them. That's against the law. You don't even want to drag them. They have made it impossible to move them, haven't they? That little darn being. Because they threw themselves into the surface. They let the, they let their they spread out their base of support so big they use every inch of their body and guess what now the force that I have to use to move them is way bigger than I really want to in the store 
<laughs> without drawing attention. So it's a natural tendency the way we use center of gravity and basic support. We, when we try to put this concept into functional context, let's use the sports figures for a second, okay? Um, you're a sports person, come with me for one second. You can be my demo, right? Okay. Because okay. I know you've been dying to do this, but we're going we're gonna to turn just like this. All right. What I'd like you to do is um, try to keep yourself as stable as possible. <clears throat> I want to try to knock you off balance, if, if I can. You don't mind, right? Okay. okay. Like you can stand any way you want, but I'm, gonna, I'm going to knock you over. Okay. Right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. I mean, really. So, so, well, you don't really put up much of a fight, so could you try to... Oh, I'm not... Okay. Well, you don't want to be knocked over. Well, don't want to push you around then. So, okay, okay don't want to push you around. or the subway, which I think is really entertaining, oh, yeah. particularly when you're at an airport, you know, because as people run on with their little suitcases and they stand there and they're like, okay, ready to go, and you know, they're flying. As soon as that thing goes that way, their body's going that way, right, because they haven't perched themselves well at all, and then they do this, you know, and then they crash into you, so I'm always standing like this, waiting for the person to crash into me, because those idiots, they're little rolling, you know, wheel, um, little wheelie suitcase is not going to hold them in place. You know, hold on to the straps or spread your legs a little bit. So when the bus is moving this way, you are ready for it. You certainly can't stand like this, can you? No, because you go flying backwards. And you certainly can't stand like this. And God knows you should not be a ballerina at that time because you're going to fly all over the place. So put the principles together. What did Kim have to do to stabilize herself? against a force that was getting rougher and stronger and stronger, way more than gravity, right? Mm -hmm. So what did you have to do? Lower center. Lower center of gravity, number one. Widen, widen, base. And then widen, widen the base of support. Bring and her center, bring her center closer to the base. Bring her center of gravity closer to the base. So you always keep the center of gravity within the base, right? So you lower it, keep it in the base of support, and widen that base of support. So unlike... We, and we certainly don't want our clients to engage in movement by being supine. <laughs> well, what's the point? That's the, that's the purpose of our two-year-old who doesn't want to be moved. We want our client to move, but we want them to do it safely. Okay, does that make sense? All right. There's a, there's a slide that talks about the, um, the, the things that can affect movement. Okay, other than base of support and center of gravity, what are some other things that you know will challenge people's movement that you already know that exist in our space? Mass. Mass. Weight. Weight affects movement, doesn't it? The greater the mass, the more force it needs to be able to move. But in certain circumstances, the greater the mass, the faster it can move, depending on the circumstances. Can you think about that for a second? Yeah. Like a bowling ball rolling down a hill. Like a bowling ball rolling down a hill is going to go much faster than a tennis ball. Or a tennis ball rolling down the hill. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Because the mass, and there is a mathematical equation associated with this, which we will just skip right over. Um, 
Yes, it does. It has mm -hmm. to do with velocity mm -hmm. and measuring that. That the mass, the, the amount of mass that you have affects the speed by which that object moves. It's the, it's the reason why when you're in a car, a vehicle that is about 2,000 pounds, there is this estimated distance you should have that if you slam on your brakes, it'll take that long for it to stop. Does that make sense? But if it were a bicycle and you slammed on your brakes, you would think it would.